this is chapter 10, stresses in the soil mass. If you look at the list of course objectives here, so we have so far put a check mark on every single course objective except this last one here, determine stress changes and distribution due to surface loads. So that's what we're going to cover today. So first to explain what stress distribution is, I'm listing two scenarios here. So this is the first scenario. Uh, you probably have seen this in chapter 11 when we were doing the consolidation calculation. So we have this dense sand layer on top of NC clay. And then we're going to put 10 feet of very large sandy fuel on top. And we have the unit weight of the sandy fuel, 100 pounds per cubic foot. And this is an infinite long sandy fuel. So that's a windy compression. And if I ask you to calculate the stress increase due to this sandy fuel on top, so this delta sigma z is simply induced by that sandy fuel. So this is basically 10 feet of sandy fuel. So that's what we did in consolidation calculation. So that's scenario one, pretty simple. We're going to focus in this chapter is actually the second scenario. So again, you have this dense sand layer on top of clay. And if you want to figure out the consolidation, the settlement in the clay layer, you need to know the stress increase induced by this surface load. For this second scenario, we have a 10-story building on top. And this 10-story building has this pressure of 1,000 PSF. So that pressure is still 1,000 PSF, but the area of this pressure is much smaller. In, in this case, what will be the stress increase in the clay layer? If it's very close to the surface, this delta sigma z is approximately equal to this surface load. So that's 1000 PSF. If you're fairly close to the surface, but as you increase the depth, this delta sigma Z is going to decrease. And in this chapter, we're going to basically learn how to do this calculation, how to figure out the stress increase due to that surface load. And uh, to solve this stress distribution due to surface load, uh, we're going to use this Bushnack solution. So basically, Bushnack solved this stress distribution by assume, assuming soil is an infinitely large half space elastic media. And he provided this analytical solution. So we have this point load P. Okay? So this is a point load at the surface. And Bushnack solution provides us basically an expression to estimate the stress increase. And this is a vertical stress increase we call delta sigma z at any location below the surface. And a few things I want to highlight on this figure. The first one, this is z here. This is the depth of that point. You want to estimate the stress increase. And then the horizontal distance from that point to the point load, we call r. This is small r here. And then the solution is expressed in term of P over Z. So P is point load, Z is depth times this factor I1. So this is the influence factor. And this I1 is a function of location. And this I1, if you look at this uh, I1 expression, R is that horizontal distance I just mentioned, and Z is depth. So based on Bushnack solution, basically if you know the depth of the point, if you know the horizontal location, then you can calculate the stress increase due to that point load P. And most of the time, you will see in this chapter when we solve stress distribution problem, we're going to use tab uh, a tabular form of solution. So this I1 is a function of position, R and Z. So in this table, you notice we have this R and R over Z value, and then the corresponding I1. So this is basically a tabular form of that previous equation 10.14. And this is basically for different R Z value. And if your R over Z value falls in between this, you can use simple interpolation. And once you get I1, you can calculate delta sigma Z with this expression here. So that's Bushnack's point load solution. It's very simple to use. So point load solution is really simple. It's really easy to use. 
but uh, point loads are not a good representation of common situations. So for many engineering applications, the loads are spread over a finite area. And I'm listing a couple examples here. So on the left-hand side, this is a square foundation, square footing. It's called isolated square uh, footing. And on the right-hand side, this is a wall strip footing. So in reality, the load from the building is spread over these finite areas. So that point load may or may not be a good approximation of the real situation. To investigate this point load solution, let's look at the simple 10 by 10 square footing case here. So this is basically the one showing on the left picture. We have a square footing. The size of this footing is 10 by 10, and we have a pressure of 1000 PSF. So far, we learned the point load solution. So let's use the point load solution to solve this stress increase directly beneath this foundation. So we can approximate this by an equivalent point load. So this P is pressure times the area of the footing. So notice that P is force. So you need to convert pressure to force. So basically Q times A. And we can use a bushing solution to figure out this delta sigma Z. But the question is, is this point low solution a good approximation of that surface load? So the accuracy of this approximation depends on where we compute the stress increase. If you're close to the surface load, if you're close to that surface, then this point load is a poor approximation. And if you're further away, if you're far away from this surface load, then the point load solution is a good approximation. And just a rule of thumb, how far is far enough for a good approximation? So the depth Z is greater than two times the dimension of the foundation, just a rule of thumb. So if you're to be away from the surface, then that point load solution is very likely to be a very good approximation. And the reason for this is there's a very important principle called St. Venant principle. So St. Venant principle basically states that the effects of loading with the same magnitude but different distributions dissipate quickly as distance increases. If I plot this stress increase due to the surface load, if it's, let's say, a square footing on top, so you have a higher increase close to the footing, and then a smaller increase as you get further away. So this is horizontal direction, basically R. And for that point load, if you're close to the surface, soil is going to feel that surface load. So for point load, you would expect a sharper increase directly beneath that surface point load. So again, delta sigma z which means in this case, if you're using the point load as approximation, it's probably going to be a bad approximation because the effect of the surface load, the shape of the surface load actually matters at this depth. But as you get deeper down, the depth increases and the effect of this different distribution actually decreases. For point load, if so you are further away from the surface, distribution is going to get very similar, very close to the actual footing. Basically, the effects of that surface distribution dissipate as you get deeper down. And as I mentioned, just as rule of thumb, if the depth Z is greater than two times the dimension of the footing, your approximation by point load is most likely to be a good approximation. But as I mentioned in uh, many engineering applications, because you have this finite shaped surface load and you need to sometimes estimate the stress increase close to the surface. So that's what we're going to focus on next. Basically the way to get solutions for distributed loads is to integrate the point load solution over finite areas. And I've listed here a few examples of finite area uh, surface loads. So we're going to focus on this rectangular load. And this table basically summarizes the equation for different types of surface loads. 
And as I mentioned, we're going to focus on just uniformly loaded rectangular area. And this solution is actually presented in a very similar form as a point load solution. So you have an influence factor that you can look up from tables or figures, then multiply by the pressure. So all these have very similar form. So that's why we're going to just focus on one and you should be able to solve the rest. So for this rectangular area, um, we're going to look at the solution and we're going to look at a few different cases here. So the first one, so this is at the depths below the corner of rectangular load. Okay. So this point A is at the depth Z. So this is again depth Z. And then it's directly below the corner of the rectangular load. And for this case, the, surf, uh, the vertical stress increase delta sigma Z is presented in term of Q, that's surface pressure, times an influence factor we call I3 here. Recall the point load solution, it's P over Z squared times I1. So they're in very similar form. So basically the pressure times an influence factor. And for this case number one here, this I3 is a function of the geometry of that surface load and the function of depth. So basically I3 is a function of M and N. And this M and N, they are defined using the dimension of the footing and also the depth of the point. So B, this is the width of the rectangular footing and L is the length of the rectangular footing. And Z, as I mentioned, this is depth. And if you calculate M and Z, then you can use the solution presented in terms of tables or figures. So this table 10.10, .10, you have basically N value and N value. And then all these columns here are I3 values. So given an N and M combination, you can look I3 directly from this table. Again, if you have values in between, you just use interpolation. So this 10.10 .10 is for a case where the point is, so that point below the corner of the rectangular area. And this figure basically is the same solution, but presented in this figure form. So on this figure, you have N value, and then these different curves correspond to different N values. The I3 is the Y axis value. So basically given uh, M, then M and N value, you can look for I3 from this figure as well. And then case number two here. So this is basically any point below rectangular area. So this point A is below, at any point below the rectangular area. And the way to solve this case is you construct this or you divide this rectangular load in a way such that A prime is at the corner of each sub rectangles. So in this case, we subdivide this original rectangle loads into four smaller rectangles. And this point A or A prime here is at the corner of each of these smaller rectangles. In, in that case, you can use the same solution and then just use, uh, just sum all these stress increases. So that's why you have this expression here. So these are basically the influence factor for each of the small rectangles. And the way to get these I3 values is the same. So you calculate the B and L value for each smaller rectangles, and then you look the I3 value from the table. In case number three, so this is basically at the center below the rectangular load. So this is the center. And for this case, the stress increase delta sigma Z is Q, again, surface pressure times I3 or I4. So it's Q times I4. And this I4 is a function of the geometry of the footing and the depth of the point. And here, M1, L over B, and we set L, the larger one to be the length and the smaller one to be the width. And the function of N1, which is Z over B, and this small b is half of the width. 
And this I4 value again is uh, given in term of table. And this is table 10.11. So this is table 10.11. So this is for point at the center. And this table I uh, this table 10.11 gives you I4 value as a function of M1 and N1. And these two values we just defined in previous slide. So M1 and M1. So that's the third case. And these three cases basically cover all the um, possible situations for point load calculation uh, or stress increase calculation below rectangular loads. So next, uh, next, let's look at a couple examples. Uh, 